I welcome you back to the today's session on framing questions. When we frame questions, we have to go through the three types, WH questions, verbal questions and tag questions. We can frame three types of questions. The questions that start with question words like what, when, which, where and why are called WH questions. Verbal questions are the questions that start with verbs which are further classified into three types. I have taken only the verbs here. B form of the verbs, do form of the verbs and perfect tense verbs. In addition to that, with the help of models also, we can frame questions. When we say models, uh, the list of model verbs like can, could, may, might, shall, should, will, would, ought to, must, need and dare. But we cannot use all the model verbs in framing questions except for a few. When we work out exercises, we will come across that. Uh, when you take B form of the auxiliary verbs, you have this division. In singular, you have is and am and then uh, singular past tense, you have was. In plural present tense, you have are and past tense, you have were. So, with these verbs, you can form questions. Next, we come to do form of the verbs with which we can form questions. When you take in present tense in the do form of the verbs, you have do and does. When you take in past tense, you have did. So, with the help of do, does and did, which belongs to do form of the auxiliaries, we can form questions. Next, we come to perfect tense auxiliaries. When you take perfect tense auxiliaries in the present tense, you have have and has. And in the past tense, you have had. So, with the help of have, has, had, once again we can make questions. So the questions that start with verbs are called verbal questions. Now we move on to tags. Tag is usually added at the end. It is noteworthy that tag is added only at the end of a sentence. If the sentence is positive, then the tag becomes negative. And if the sentence is negative and the tag is positive, I repeat, if the sentence is affirmative or positive, the tag is negative. If the tag is positive, then the sentence has to be negative. For example, let's check. He has gone there in the sentence. The sentence is positive. He has gone there. There is no addition of any other word like no or not. So, he has gone there. So, the sentence is, sentence is positive. The tag should be negative as per this rule, rule number 2. So, sentence is positive means the tag is negative. So, as per that rule, I have added a negative tag. And how to add tags we will be seeing later. He hasn't gone there. In the sentence, the sentence itself is negative. Hasn't states that clearly. So, hasn't here means has not gone there. So, he has not. The usage of not makes the sentence negative here. If the sentence is negative, then the tag has to be positive. So, I have added a positive tag as he. When I take a tag, I have to check the verb used in the sentence. And if the verb is given in a positive, the verb is positive, then I have to change the same verb into its negative form and I have to use the tag. If the verb itself is negative by the addition of not, then I have to use the positive form of the same verb and I have to take the subject after the verb so that it becomes a tag. Now we come to the first type of framing questions which is WH questions. When you frame WH questions, you have to be careful of one particular rule. The verb precedes the noun, the subject. The verb precedes the subject in framing questions. So, the structure of a sentence is inverted. Usually, the subject comes first after which the verb goes, whereas in questions, the verb comes first and the subject goes next. So, let us now go to the examples. He is a HR manager. When I say he is a HR manager, what kind of a question I can frame here? Who is he or if I ask a question, who is a HR manager, probably he is a HR manager would be the answer. So, I can frame two types of questions here. Who is he? Suppose you are watching the person going that side 
and somebody asked this question to the person who was already working in the firm. So he, the person asked a question like this, who is he? The person wor working in the firm could answer like this, he is the HR manager. You can also have one more question for this. What is he here or if, if you ask a question what is he here, then he defini definitely once again you will get this answer, he is a HR manager. The designation will be the, based on the crux, this one, based on this you can form a question. Next one, this road takes you to the town. So you concentrate on this road here. So this road takes you to town. So definitely you can frame a question like this. Which road takes you to the town? So you give an answer like this. This road takes you to the town. Watch the structure once again. Takes is the verb here after which comes the subject. Which road you take to town gives an incorrect version or the meaning changes or that is not possible. That is an incredible structure. She is collecting the circuits. It is an action which is insisted here. She is connecting the circuits. So definitely I can frame a question on what she is doing. The same thing is given here. What is she doing? It should not be what she is doing. As we talk, we are using questions like this only. What she is doing, we will ask. That is not the right way of asking a question or framing a question. The verb comes first after which the subject goes. So what is she doing? That is the right way of asking. Then, my brother went to temple yesterday. So, it is in past tense. I have to use did plus go gives went. So, I have to use the auxiliary verb did in the question. Where did your brother go yesterday? Did plus go gives went. Here again, before the possessive case or a genitive case, you are, I am using the verb. The verb comes before the noun. Then, the last example I have to finish this assignment on or before 9th of this month. When I say I have to finish this assignment on or before 9th of this month, I am very particular about the date or the time schedule allotted for this assignment. So, I am insisting on uh, 9th. 9th is the deadline for the finishing of this assignment. When I give a sentence like this, what kind of a question we can frame? Let's see. When do you have to finish this assignment? So, you insist on when, the time period. When you are using the question word when, it, it gives the stress on the time period where tells you about the place, it gives information about the place and what explains or gives an information, what is she doing here, gives an information, she is doing this. Which road, which once again, it is a question word, WH word, and who gives the names of name of the person. So, the question word who, which, what, where, and when are used for framing questions for the sentences given here. So, when you frame WH questions, you have to check whether you are using the verb before the noun, that is the subject. And whether you are using WH question words like this, check whether you are using WH question words like this and check the verb used there, check the tense of the sentence given and then try to use the same tense in the question also when you frame questions. Suppose the tense is present tense, the question should not be in past tense, the question also should be in present tense. If the sentence given is in future tense, then you have to frame a question accordingly. So try to frame a question with in connection to the sentence, the tense of the sentence given there. That is very, very important before you frame a question. What you have to check? You have to check two things. Check the tense of the sentence given and frame a question and check the verb form used there and based on which you have to use. For example, here went is given, went is a past tense verb where I do not have an auxiliary verb but the implied presence of did plus go gives went, which we have studied already. So that gives a clue for the question. So where did you, did your brother go? So I have split the verb into two did plus go in the sense, in the question given there. So check the verb forms before you frame questions. If you have used a perfect tense auxiliary like this, I have to finish. Have is a perfect tense auxiliary. 
So check the question there. When do you have to finish the question? But here, I have to have, seems to be perfect in software at the same time, but have yourself as a root verb. Now we move on to the second type of framing questions, the verbal questions. With the help of verbs, we frame questions. We call such questions as verbal questions, questions that start with a verb. We call such questions as verbal questions. Now, we'll go to the examples. Did you go to cinema? Did you go to cinema? Somebody is asking this question. So, the person, the respondent, gives this answer. No, I went to temple. One thing we have to notice here. All the WH questions gets either yes or no as the answer in all the examples. Let's see, whether it is the present tense question or the past tense question or it is a question which starts with a uh, model auxiliary. Irrespective of that, the verbal question gives naturally either a yes or no answer. So that is not worry yes. Let us go to the first question once again. Did you go to the cinema? Did you go to cinema? When I say, did you go to cinema, I am asking this question to somebody, so the respondent gives, no, I went to temple. Suppose the person had gone to cinema, the person would have replied like this, yes, I went to cinema. Why? Did plus go gives went. As we have seen already in WH questions, we have seen this, did plus go gives the past tense. And the answer did indicates the past tense. Has she come to class? In this question, the question starts with the perfect tense auxiliary has because the subject is third person singular. So, I am using the perfect tense auxiliary has here in this question. Has she come to class? The teacher is asking this question to the students or to the whole class. So, when the teacher asks this question, probably one or two of the students will volunteer. They would respond like this. If she had come to class, they would say, yes, she had come to class. Or if she hadn't come to class, they would say, no, she, has come, she hasn't come to class. So, Check once again. There is an there is the usage of yes here. All questions that start with verbs take either yes or no in the beginning of the answer. Can you hold the drafter? Maybe you are traveling by traveling the bus. So when you go by bus, you are not able to stand at a position and you lose your balance. You feel like asking your friend, "Can you hold hold my drafter?" So that is a situation. Do you imagine a situation like this now? Can you hold the drafter or you are not able to manage all the luggage which you have in your hand in addition to the drafter, so you would like to get the help from the person who is standing beside you. So we are asking this, can you hold the drafter? Can tells the person is very well known to you, so you are using can. Suppose you are, don't know the person, the person is a stranger, the person is weird to you, but still you feel like getting a help from the person, you would ask the same question in a different way. Could you please hold this drafter or could you hold this drafter for for some time, so that you can get ready, after which you can get the draft from them. So, here the usage of can tells the person is of the same age, age group or maybe less, lesser than that. So, or the person is well known already. So, you are using the model auxiliary can. Could and would at the same time gives, when you frame questions, the usage of could and would, it gives polite questions. When you don't know the person or the person is very elder to you, you would like to start questions with either could or would. Now, let us go to the next question. Will you do this favor for me? Will you do this favor for me? Will is a model auxiliary. It is a model auxiliary verb. If you feel like doing the favor, the respondent might say, yes, I will do the favor for you. Or if the respondent feels that the person is not in a position to do the help for you, person may say, no, I cannot do this favor for you or I will not do this favor because of this particular reason. They might state the reason also. Is she a cryptologist? This is the next question given. Is she a cryptologist? So, it is a question that arises out of doubt, arises out of suspicion. So, it is a doubt which is to this question is asked to clarify the doubt. No, she is a genetic engineer. Suppose she is a cryptologist, the answer could be, yes, she is a cryptologist. Once again, the usage of no and yes, what were they? Would you like to accompany us? Could you lend your pen for some time? So, see, would you like to accompany us? The person may not be may not be known to you. When, you. when the person is not known to you, you would like to be very polite enough. So, you ask, 
would you like to accompany us? Or uh, when, the per when, you, when you feel the person is very elderly or the person is elder to you, so you would like to ask a question like this, would you like to? And you write especially job applications, you write, I would like to apply for this post just to give a polite tone. Could you lend your pen? Here again, the person, same situation. So the question becomes polite. The usage of could and would in the beginning of verbal questions give polite politeness to the tone used. Now we come to the third item. That's tag question in framing questions. So tags are nothing but the last uh, addition. Tags are nothing but the addition at the end of every sentence. Tag is usually added at the end of every sentence. We have already seen if the sentence is positive, the tag should be negative. If the sentence is negative, then the tag should be positive. Let's take these examples now. I am an engineer, aren't I? One thing is very doubtful here. I have used a verb am here, whereas I am using aren't I here. Along with when I is used as a subject, uh, naturally it goes by the verb, it goes with the verb am. So when I goes with am and the sentence is positive, the tag usually takes aren't in the because it should be negative, I cannot write a question like am and I, it's actually ain't I, but I have to write it as aren't I. This is an exception where I don't use the same verb form, whereas in rest of the sentences I use the same verb form either in negative tense or in positive way. I am not an engineer, am I? When it takes not, it is very easy for me to use am there, but when, when it does not take not, I have to use only aren't. It is very noteworthy. She has painted the picture. Here the verb form used is has and it is positive, the sentence is positive, so the tag has to be negative. Just checking the verb that is used here, the verb that is used here is has, so I have to change it into its negative form, so it becomes hasn't. So the subject used is nothing but she. So I am taking the same she there. Use the same subject and the verb, same verb, if the verb is positive there, here it should be negative, if the verb is negative there, it should be positive. As it is positive here, I have changed it into negative, hasn't she? Raju had completed his assignment. The verb form used is had. So I have to take this verb here, it is used as positive verb here, so I have to change it into its negative form. So I am using it as hadn't he here. Raju had completed his assignment. Hadn't Raju, instead of asking hadn't Raju, I am using he. They wait for you, don't they? Let's go to the verb form here. So, if we keenly watch this, they wait. No auxiliary verb is present. Wait is a root verb. So, when a root verb is present like this, we have to check the tense of the root verb. If it is waited, it tells it is past tense. If it is wait, it tells it is present tense. So, uh, here, go to the tense of the sentence. The tense of the sentence is present. So, do plus wait alone can give wait. Did plus wait will give waited. Does plus wait will give waits. So, as wait comes here, I have to take the implied verb form do which is already present there in the sentence. They do wait for you. The do is missing. Otherwise we can call it as the implied presence of do is felt. Then I say wait. So wait along with they. In every sentence the implied presence of do and does will be there in simple present tense sentences. For example, she comes here. Even in the sentence it means she does come here. Instead of saying she does come here, I am writing it as she comes here. That is why in the tag it takes thus. Here they do wait for you. Do is implied there. That is why I am taking the same tag where. So it is positive sentence. So I am changing it into negative. The tag is negative here. Don't they? She comes here. As I said already, does is implied here. So I am using the same auxiliary verb and I am changing it in, into its negative form as the sentence is affirmative. So the tag becomes negative, doesn't she? Our chemistry teacher taught this titration. Let's go to the verb form here. The verb used here is taught. Taught is the past tense. Did plus teach can give taught. So the tag should be in 
negative form of did. So, I am changing it into didn't. Did is already there with our chemistry teacher did teach this titration. Instead of writing like that, I am writing like this. Our chemistry teacher taught this titration. This is simple past tense sentence. In simple past tense sentences and in simple present tense sentences, the implied presence of do, does and did would be there. In that case, we have to check the verb, verb form. If the verb takes an S like this, then it means the subject present is third person singular. So, we have to be very careful in using this verb does. If it is she or he or any other name given here or instead of it, anything is given here. If it is third person singular, we have to use an additional S in the simple present tense. This S occurs mainly because of the implied presence of does. If I use does directly, this sentence should be she does come here. I am not using does, I am just omitting it. So, as I omit it, the presence of does must be felt. So, I am using, I am adding an additional suffix to come and I am changing it into comes. This happens in all simple present tense sentences where there is a third person singular noun or a subject where there is a third person singular subject. So, the verb naturally becomes into its, and takes its negative form and it becomes does and she. Same thing here, it is simple past tense did is spelled. That is what we have studied in the last three sentences and in the last three tags. One thing we have to be very careful, check whether the sentence is negative. If the sentence is negative, tag is positive. Check whether the sentence is positive or negative. If one is negative, the other should be positive. If one is positive, the other should be negative. At the same time, the second thing which we have to be very careful of is, we have to check the verb form used. When do is used there or does is used there, we should not take any other verb. If had is used there, we have to use the same verb form in the tag, either in negative way or in a positive way, either as hadn't or as had. With that, we come to an end of framing questions. So, if you have any doubts, clarify it by emailing it to us.